Welcome to Merrick's Garage. Some of you have asked, James, how do you use all that bitch and space in your trailer when you go camping? Let's go take a look. Packing, step one, grow an epic beard. Compared to my K5 Blazer, the M1101A3 has so much more space. Take a look at what I can bring with me. Pop top tent. Sector 9 longboards, 6,000 scooters, firewood that's not properly seasoned. The weather guard box was awesome in the back of the K5, but it was difficult to get things in and out of. I've repurposed it and put it in the back of the trailer. Lockable, secure storage. Tons of storage for all my valuables, like rubber gloves. Putting the box in backwards enabled me to get into it without having to crawl through the bed. You guys remember the pneumatic rack system for my rack video. It's up right now, so I can load without banging my head repeatedly. Once I'm loaded, pull it down and let's go. We like to go camping quite a bit. I found it easiest to have three bins already packed, ready to go, that I can grab at any time. I keep one available, depending on where we're going, to store the stuff for that trip. I'm also a neat freak. I found it very handy to bring a Milwaukee vacuum cleaner. Don't laugh. When your kids deposit 16 tons of sand in your tent, it's really nice to vacuum it up. I also, for this trip only, saw that the campsites were a little dirty. So I'm bringing my Ryobi three horsepower power washer. I I'm, hearing, I'm hearing no on the power washer, apparently. Uh, no, that's a no. I am not bringing a Ryobi power washer. We're going to deal with the dirty campsite. Primus stove. I got to cook stuff. First aid kit. Because you never know when you might get a sucking chest wound. In these two bins, I have a citronella candle, a marshmallow gun, Ziploc bag, this, a French press, bubbles, toilet paper, and many other things. Bin number two, all our plates and dishes. Egg holder thingy for eggs. Fuel for the stove. And a tablecloth, because we're not Philistines. In bin number three, wetsuits and water gear. Moving on to the blazer, you'll find some of my more permanent stuff. When camping, I bring the trash roo bag. Great addition to the rear tire, not just for trash. This is where I keep all our wet stuff. I just did a video on the drawer system. Let me show you what I keep in it. This drawer, I keep a bunch of random stuff. Batteries for my tools, extension cord, and hammer. A really cool camping hammock, MREs, and lanterns. Drawer number two has most of my wet water stuff. Wetsuit, fins, mask, snorkel, a folding chair, and my shovel. Getting some help from my two oldest setting up the rooftop tent down at our campsite this weekend. We did go ahead and put the annex on and that is the most uh, labor intensive part of putting this tent up. Putting the tent up without the annex is just a matter of undoing some buckles and folding it out. The annex takes a little bit more work and the more I do this tent, the more I use it, the more efficient I'm going to get. So I would say at this point, getting the tent set up has taken me about 10 minutes, which all in all is really sweet. <laughs> And removing the annex as we begin to pack up after the weekend. The annex provided sleeping for my brother, his two kids, and his wife. My wife, my three kids, and I all slept up top. So nine people in this tent. That, that's pretty amazing and quite comfortably I might add. One of the issues I have had with the trailer is that my transmission was getting rather hot. I have a gauge for the transmission temperature in the body and one in the pan. I initially just had one Dereli 
uh, mounted fins cooler with fans. I decided to run the lines to the Griffin radiator as there was a built-in transmission cooler in there first and then run it out to the Doraley and then back to the transmission. And that has dropped the transmission temperature down a ton, which is a score. This is how it appears without the annex, which is nice for most of our camping and the fact that we're really not going to need the annex unless we've got inclement weather or in the case of this weekend, a ton of extra people. What do you think of the tent, Dan? Awesome! What's your favorite part of the tent? That my whole entire family can sleep in it. When we were camping at the beach this weekend, do you remember what we could see out of that window behind you? This window behind me, we can see the whole entire, well not the whole entire, but like the waves crashing on the rocks. And you were able to check the surf from your bed, huh? Yeah. Now crawl around in here, show the people how big this thing is. Look, he's doing laps like an animal. The trailer build has come together exactly how I envisioned it. I still have a couple things I want to wrap up on it, but all in all, it's dialed works well, tows well, carries a ton of stuff, and is very, very practical for the kind of camping and adventures that we uh, commonly get into over here at Merrick's Garage. There we have another episode of Merrick's Garage. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the contents of the trailer. I am pretty much finished with it at this point. I'm super happy with how it has come out. Take a look at my website, merricksgarage.com. Also, if you like what you see, please subscribe. Until next time, Peace.